one of the biggest places most guitar players fall is they actually don't see the fretboard. The framework, the simple elements, the building blocks, if you will, of music are not as clear. This video is a one week challenge where we're gonna unlock the fretboard, see it, hear it, and feel it. Let's do it. Before we dive in, remember to keep the tagging process. When we're talking about fingering, position, all these things are great, but listening, always listening to the sounds and always trying to understand what's going on and always trying to tag emotionally what's going on. Let's do it. First step is very simple. Just taking the E string and knowing each one of the notes, but not only knowing the notes, but also knowing the relationships. That means that if this is E, this is F. Why is that? Because between E and F, we have a half step. This is F and this is G. It makes sense because between F and G we have a whole step. It's understanding the notes but also knowing why the next note is the next note, right? So we're looking at this scale. We can think we're in C and then between E and F we have a half step. Between F and G we have a whole step, whole step to A, whole step to B, half step to C. So two spots, if you will, we have a half step between E and F, between B and C. So even just that is really huge. Again, and thinking about it and you can test yourself say like ah what is this note oh this is a what happens if i take it half step down oh this is a flat or this is g and this is g sharp so a flat and g sharp are the same note depending on the content it's a gretsch it's a gretsch star liner it's a really really great instrument i'm actually yeah quite sad to let it go but i think you will find a great home with you guys so if you want to get it, it's very, very simple. All you need to do is follow this link where you'll be instructed to, to, to do a few things. Yeah, not, nothing crazy, but I guess you get extra entries for um, pre-saving my album. Ta-da! This is the album. It's coming out January 12th, and I'm very excited about it. And then also, if you're in New York, drop the pic. If you are in New York, please come to the release show, which is January 19th at New Blue. Um, I'll be very excited to share the music live. Life, not life, life. This seems again simple and a lot of us can do it, but it's important to really be quick, okay? Since it's a one week challenge, please drop a comment before you start or when you start and then drop a comment a week after and see how far you can get. I think if you really mean it and we spend an hour or two a day, we can really nail this. So let's do it, why not? The time is now. The same process on the fifth string. All right, so this is A, between A and B we have a whole step, Bam, this is B, this is C. Why? Because we have a half step between B and C. It's very simple, but we wanna understand it. Another way to think about it is having that C sound and feeling the notes. This is the seventh degree, this is the one, two, this is E, F, G, and of course, this is super helpful when we're playing bar chords. If you're just starting and messing around with chords, it could be these sounds and it could be, you know, fancier sounds like that. It doesn't matter. Still, oftentimes, the root is very important. It's oftentimes in the name of the chord and the bass. It doesn't have to be, of course, but for a lot of cases, it is. The next up here is taking the major pentatonic. Five notes, only five notes. So the repetition is pretty high. So C, D, E, G, A, and C. And when I'm playing that, when I'm playing these five notes, I'm listening and I'm feeling the colors. Like we said in the beginning, this is position, but it's also understanding the colors. There is no tagging without understanding as far as I'm concerned. It's easier for me to feel the notes once I emotionally hear it and I feel the beauty of it. Again, one more time, just the position here, C major pentatonic. You can slide here, you can just do that. When I'm playing it, if I pause you, I want you to be able to tell me this is A. If you, for some reason, not sure, you can always say, ah, this is the open G string, and between G and A, we have a whole sub, so this is A, right? So it all makes sense. We just need to sometimes take our time and process the information. Two positions. I'm gonna keep this sound color of the major pentatonic, but now I'm gonna play it from here. This is a position a lot of people know. And if you don't, check it out. It's very simple and very useful. It sounds great. One more time. There 
reason I'm humming this note is C. Do. Because I want to feel, physically feel the sound of these notes. And this is one of the biggest problems with people that, like guitar players, just try to move their fingers up and down. There's nothing wrong with that, but you're going to learn better if you hear it and feel it. So this is why this challenge is so cool. Because I believe, well I know actually, that you can tag most of the fingerboard in one week if you do it right, consistently with clarity. The next step is crucial and this is where a lot of guitar players fall. They play the shapes but they don't play it in time. So you can listen and you can sing it but also I want you to play the position in time with clarity and intention. So while I'm doing this, I know the notes that I'm playing, I'm anticipating the sound that's gonna happen and I also play it in time. Again, just loosely in time, not even with a metronome just yet. Basically eight notes, keep that for a second. You want to be able to play this flow somewhat consistently with clarity. Again, if I'm stopping here, I know that this is the note D, which is the two, and it feels in this way against our tonic, our C, our center. I'm going to do the second position in the same manner. It's very important, it's simple, and you might have done it, but be honest with yourself about how truthful and how clear it is. Here we go. Three. Uh. Uh, and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and once this is clear and maybe it's already clear, I'm gonna slide between these two positions. Because at the end of the day, music is just sounds. I don't have to stay in one position. I can slide and move between these two strings. It's just five notes. If I know the notes, it's not a problem. Now again, this seems easy if you practice it. If you've never practiced the major pentatonic, so this seems like a lot. The truth is, in one week, in that great one week that you're gonna practice this, you can unlock the whole board in this manner if you practice it the way I'm talking about right now. The next step here is listening to the C and now we're going to do this position here. So we're expanding the board. We're expanding the major pentatonic here to this area. If this is not clear and you want to take your time, I created a full course unlocking the fretboard. You can check it here. And I created also another course connecting the dots between that and the soloing. So check it out. Here we go. So this is the position. If I stop you here, I want you to know that this is C. Same way that this is C, right? The E string and the E string, two octaves apart, but we see these notes on the fretboard. Again, with me, three, four, you can sing it, you can feel it, you can play it with me. Da, 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 da. One and two. And now I'm going to slide between these three positions. Now you don't have to play exactly what I'm playing, you can just be in the major pentatonic with me. Right, I'm just sliding between the positions. So I'm seeing, and I'm starting to see, after I'm seeing one, two, three positions, I'm starting to see all these sounds as one big color. So sort of like my board is like with dots of light that I can just, oh, I want this note here or this note here. So I'm thinking about E or G or A and I can go to the different areas. And of course, I spend quite a bit of time practicing and still practicing every day because I wanna see it, I wanna feel it and I wanna connect to it. So the more we do it, the clearer it is. I'm gonna show you the next two positions and then we'll do it on, on the five positions. Of course, if you haven't done it yet, position by position and then connecting them. You can always break it down, two positions, one position here, then three, then four, etc., etc. The next two positions are here. This is the fourth position, if you will, of the major pentatonic. You can hear that C. And then the next one is here. And then the board, of course, repeats itself. So the same way we did this here, it will be here. So, 
the idea for us is nailing each one of the position loosely, hearing it, feeling it, playing it in time, and then starting to connect it. Let's go forward. Here, we're going to take a different color that is very, very important. This is the major scale, a Ionian sound. We will take the C major scale. Now, most of you played a few of the positions, but I also know that a lot of you are actually not that comfortable moving between the positions. So I'm going to show the first position. Listening, again, we're tagging. The process is listening and tagging and feeling it. So if I'm stopping you on this note, I want you to know this is F, this is the fourth note, and it feels like that against the C. Again, continuing the scale. This is just the position, even if you know it, when I'm playing it, try to know exactly each note and note that I'm playing. So if I'm stopping you here, you're like, oh yeah, this is D, this is the two of C. This is huge because this is how music feels. One more time with me. If you can't play guitar, just listen and try to guess, not guess, but know the notes that I'm playing. Sol, fa, mi, re, do, etc. Now I'm going to do it loosely in time, the same way I did with the pentatonic scale. So it's sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now the next one here. Just the position. Again, tagging, looking at it, and if you need more time, no problem. And then I'm going to connect these two in this way. Start here. One two and slide and I decide whenever I want to slide I can change directions at will descend maybe ascend descend maybe open string Now what I'm going to do is listening to this sound, the C center, I'm going to do a little improvisation with these two positions. Now it's not completely in time, but I'm just choosing notes. And when I'm doing that, I'm thinking Do, Mi, or Do, Mi, Si, E, Re, So. So I'm thinking about the sound. Now, if I'm making mistakes, it's fine. But I'm trying to connect. Oh, this is B, the seventh. Ooh, the seventh again, B. So that process kind of links the two ideas of playing the position in time, moving between them, and now sort of like free improvisation where I choose notes between these sections of the guitar, but it's already making choices and trying to hear how they sound. How they sound and how they feel. The next step of that is taking the third position and adding that to the mix. How do we do that? Again, the same process, listening, playing the fingerings slowly but surely. And I would suggest using these fingers, fingerings, making sure that every note is clear, making sure that I'm hearing the notes. And if I'm not, it's okay. I can pause, I can try again, I can make mistakes, but I want to hear it as clearly as possible. This is the tagging. Listening to this note. Ooh, what is that? Ah, this is the sixth. Ooh, let's hear this. Wow. And that information is very helpful because let's say I'm playing a shell chord, C major seven, shell chord. And all of a sudden I'm imagining that color. Ooh, this is C major seven, six. How beautiful is that? Maybe I'm hearing the E on top. It's so simple and so beautiful because all I'm doing is imagining that six against the C and all of a sudden I have the C major seven with the six and the E on top. You know, it's, it's really exactly that. It's messing around and exploring these sounds 
with a lot of intention. And then I'll do it with these three positions in time. One and two and three. Maybe I'm sliding here. We'll just sing C major as this big thing around these three positions that we know. Maybe open string. Just trying to challenge myself a little bit. Can I find it? Am I hearing it? And if I'm making a mistake, right away I'm asking myself, oh, what is that? Ah, this is B flat and should it be B natural. Let's compare. Hmm, this is how it feels, okay. And going back to it, right? There's no problem of making a mistake. Okay, this is D flat and should have been D. No problem. And then I'll continue that process on these fingerings as well. This is basically the fourth position and the fifth. You probably know these positions, but not well enough to be free. That's the thing, we need to be free enough with the framework, with the structure, with the shapes, with the sounds in our feelings and our ears, so we can be free. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really curious if this is helpful. If it is, maybe send it to a friend and let's see how this challenge is going. All right, peace out.